Kuaba. Hello and welcome to BBC Sports Africa, a weekly program dedicated to giving you the very best of African sports. I'm Janine Anthony and coming up in this week's program... After Ghanaian football's devastating match-fixing scandal, we want to find out how it can rebuild trust. Boxing Clever, meet the former lawyer who's putting female Muslims on the sporting map. They would say, you know, a Muslim girl wouldn't do something like this. Most of us play Scrabble for fun, but not Nigerian world champion Wellington Jigiri. Toughest opponents and top tips, Kenyan Geoffrey Kamura explains it all. And who will sit on the yellow throne in this week's Armchair Experts? Thank you for joining us on BBC Sport Africa. I'm in Ghana this week as we look at how football in the home of the four-time African champions can recover after June's devastating match-fixing scandal. We also have athletics and scrabble later on in the show, but first we start with boxing and an inspirational tale of a Somali who is bidding to become her country's first ever Olympic boxer. Now, Ramla Ali has faced so many challenges from fleeing wars on Mogadishu to facing classroom bullies, but arguably her biggest challenge has been persuading her family that as a Muslim female, she also has a place in the ring. I wouldn't tell my parents. I just knew they wouldn't understand. They would tell me, like, it's a man's sport. They would say, you know, a Muslim girl wouldn't do something like this. And I knew that they would try and make me stop. I'd love more Muslim women to get into sports, because you just don't see them. I know what they feel like, because I, I felt like that when I was young, scared to tell your parents. They were Muslim and they were Muslim and they were Muslim. I competed in the national finals when I told my mum, oh, I'm just going for a jog. I remember giving my kit bag to my coach and saying, I'll meet you there later. And I said, mum, mum, I'm going for a run, I'll see you soon. And all the while going to compete nationally. I remember walking in from training and like everyone was there in the living room and I thought, what's going on here? We never sit down together as a family, it's mad. Um, and then they were like, look, you need to stop. And it just broke my heart when they said that. So I got into secondary school and I was fairly overweight. Um, Smiley food's delicious, by the way. I was picked on a lot for being the size that I was. So I went to the local gym and then I stumbled upon uh, like a boxer size class. I loved it. From then on, I just became hooked in the results I was seeing in my body, to the confidence I was gaining, to the friends I was making. I get a call from one of the sisters saying, we found a video of Ramla boxing. And just so you know, we're not gonna allow you to get married and we're not gonna bless the marriage unless you as the husband-to-be forced her to stop boxing. I had to kind of lie to them and say, OK, I will. I wanted to see Ramla achieve her goals and something she's worked for all her life. He said, I'm so proud of you. What you're doing is amazing and it breaks my heart that you've done it in secret for so long and um, don't worry, I'm going to talk to your mum and I'm going to tell it's actually a good thing and it's not a bad thing. I couldn't tell you how much I cried that day. Every day I'm getting messages from um, people saying you're doing an incredible thing for our country, you're raising awareness for our country. You know, a country that's been associated with war and 
famine and that for so long. So you're bringing a positive light to the country. Thank you so much. The reasons why my mum would ask me to stop for so long was just because of community backlash. But now that she's found that the community are actually okay with it, she's become okay with it, which is great. <laughs> Having a conversation about something you love with someone you love, it's just an incredible feeling. Getting to the Olympics is very realistic, not just because I, you know, I'm her husband and I love her and I'm biased and I coach her. Obviously, I'm always going to say that, but Olympic level, national level coaches have seen her box, have watched her train, and they are the ones that have said she's got what it takes. It would be a great honour to represent Somalia at the Olympics and purely because I think um, it would make my mum so proud, it would make my family proud, make the community proud um, and for me that's just a, like a huge honour. What a woman Ramla Ali is and we wish her well in her Olympic quest. Time now for our Sports Quiz Armchair Expert. Now, it's that competition where you put your sporting knowledge to the test. Who will be battling for our throne in Nairobi, Kenya? Let's cross over to our referee, Lynn Wachira, and she is back. Welcome to this week's Armchair Expert. Let's meet the contestants. Hi, I'm Webster Mwangi. I'm a die-hard Arsenal fan, and I'm here for one thing, and that's to win. Hello, Africa. My name is Lotan Salape. I'm a sports enthusiast, and I'm here to beat Webster. First things first, let's have a look at the rules. Round one. It's simple. 30 seconds each to answer as many questions as possible on what's going on in the sporting week. This week, we jog your memory with the 2018-2019 English Premier League season opener transfers and some volleyball which two African players scored for Liverpool in their season opener? Uh, Sadio Mane, Mohamed Salah. Correct. How many goals did Chelsea score in their first match of the season? Three. Correct. Which game was the 2018-2019 EPL season opener? Mm. Uh, Manchester Man United versus Leicester City. Victor Wanyama started for Tottenham in the season opener. True or false? False. Who are the current <laughs> women's volleyball African champions? Cameroon, Kenya or Egypt? Egypt. Wrong Cameroon. And your time is up, Webster. You got three points, Lotan. Your 30 seconds are start now. Okay. Who scored City first goal against Arsenal? Uh, pass. Raheem Sterling, how many goals did Sadio Mane score in the opening Two. game? Correct. Who scored the opening goal of the 2018-2019 season? Correct. Which team scored the highest goals in their season opener? Ch Liverpool. Correct. What is the name of the Kenya's women volleyball pass. team? Malkia Strikers Ryder Cup is played between which teams? Um, uh, Europe and America. Correct. Which country hosted the 2018 FIFA Under 20 Women's World Cup? Pass. France. And your time is <laughs> up a lot, <laughs> And you got four points. Now let's have a look at the scores for round one. And that is the end of round one. See you later for round two. I need to work on my tennis. Not Scrabble, I'm pretty good at that. But did you know that to Scrabble, it's you know, mostly just rearranging letters on the board to form words, but to some others, it's actually a profession. Now take for example, Nigerian Wellington Jigiri, who three years ago made the continent proud by being the first African to win the World Scrabble Championships. All I do is play Scrabble. It's my passion. I do it for fun. I do it for business and it pays the bills. My name is Wellington Jigiri, and I'm Africa's only World Scrabble champion. Your words, words hit me like a white noise. You trick me and your sad tones make it worse. Your words, words hit me like a fast train. It wasn't until much later that we, I got to realize that Scrabble was more than a game. It was an actual sport. Wellington's victory uh, was very inspiring. And so for me, I see, okay, uh, my, the peak of my Scrabble career, I want to get to the World Championship level. I had already won the African Championship twice. 
in 2008 and 2010 and uh, I figured I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I didn't strive to win the World Championship. The 2015 World Scrabble Championship, which was to hold in Australia back then, it was supposed to be my last championship and uh, I gave it my all. I practiced harder, I did fatigue training. There were a whole series of challenges that came between me and winning the World Championship that year. From visa issues to arriving very late for the championship and then having to practically play fatigued all through. It was hell, but I had to give it everything. Lewis actually had a lot of chances in that game, but somehow, somehow, I managed to pull back into the lead. The match ended 4-0 in my favor. Wow. It was a very, very exhilarating process. Even after having made history by winning the World Championship, all I wanted to do was to come back home and uh, celebrate with my people. Well, it's Indigo is an inspiration to me. When he won the World Championships in 2016, I was surprised. The whole world was surprised. In fact, I was happy to tell people that I placed Kavlan in Nigeria and just won the World Championship. So every time I think of how hard it can be, if Jigere can do it, I can surely do it. Yeah, just pick four and add to this. After returning from the World Championship, I came up with the Wellington Foundation for Scrabble and Mind Development in Africa. I will be very, very excited if such a day comes where as many young Scrabble players and young Nigerians generally can earn an actual living by playing Scrabble alone. Scrabble can be likened to life. It gives you from an empty bag and you have to make the best out of it. A Nigerian world champion, now that makes me super proud. That's the end of part one. We'll take a break and when we come back, I'll be revealing something really interesting behind this door. But most importantly, how Ghana can recover its football status after this year's match fixing scandal. This is Sport Africa from the BBC. Welcome back to BBC Sport Africa. Now, earlier this year, Ghanaian football was rocked to its foundation after an investigation by journalist Anas Aremio Anash revealed referees taking money to influence local games. Now, numerous matches were fixed to the fury of fans who paid their hard-earned money to watch these games in good faith. 
So in this week's big question, we're asking, what can Ghanaian football do to regain our trust? In June 2018, a sting operation by journalist Anas Arameyo Anas revealed several dozen match officials taking cash gifts from undercover reporters posing as fans in a bid to influence Ghana Football League matches. The head of the Ghana Football Association, Kwesi Nyantichi, was also filmed receiving $65,000 from an undercover reporter acting as a businessman from the Middle East who was looking to invest in Ghanaian football. That led to his FIFA suspension, dissolution of the Ghana Football Executive Board, suspension of match officials, and a complete halt of the Ghana Domestic Football League. So, a damning indictment on the state of football in Ghana, a country that has won four African crowns and come closer than any other African country to the semi-final of the World Cup. So I've come here to the city of Accra to find out how Ghana intends to rebuild its football again. Now, one of the groups most affected was, of course, the fans. So we've come here to find out about the state of their favorite game. I was enraged. It was a moment of uh, shame for me as a Ghanaian, as a sports journalist, as a follower, an ardent follower of the sport. With a kind of uh, beginning that, that we are having from what we have seen in the, in the expose, I think that the things will come back we will restore public confidence. What I find quite um, amazing is that people will pay more than 20 Ghana cities, which is uh, something like $5, to go to the pub and watch European football instead of going to the stadium. Sometimes free gates are open for free, and we were really falling. Uh, the system was uh, in such an alarming decline. Sometimes you, you are on the field and um, um, an official handles a match and you feel that the scoreline was even known even before the game started. It will take a, a bit more of a time before we, we, we can trust them again because uh, we didn't know the mentality of uh, the referee coming into the game. Maybe they could start well and then later on the whole thing will come again. So when they start and maybe along the line you see that they are consistent then you say we can trust them now. It is time. We also fight for women to be there, the ethic. At least the women, they should also take in charge. Because since the men are always there and they are not helping us. Earlier this month, Ghana's Referees Association handed out further sanctions to local officials, meaning that eight have been banned for life, while a further 53 must serve a decade-long ban. So, what do those decision-makers see as the way forward? We talk of proper allowance meant for the referees, because per the video, all that you hear is TNT, food. That is where the problem is. So give us the money before you start your league, so that if we have the money and the referee is going, there won't be the need for him to be asking for TNT hotel, anybody who give you something free is expecting something in return. So the question is, what are officials here in Ghana doing to rebuild the sport? Now after the local FA was disbanded, FIFA put together a normalization committee to run the sport. We met with all the constituents of the football family to have a dialogue, to listen. And we asked them to put down what they think is wrong and any good ideas that they have. And we have received a lot of that. So now, now that we have brought a mandate to reform Ghana football, we will meet with them again. Uh, because I think when you listen to radio, people come on radio and you see that that's, that's a great idea this guy is talking about. You see that the solutions are out there. You know, so we, the normalization committee, we want to be a platform from which ideas will come in and we use these ideas to reform kind of football. And then there are the sponsors. Now they are a very essential part of making this work. Do they still see this brand as attractive and do they still see a future in this? Why should we withdraw? This wouldn't be the first time a sponsor decided to stick with a brand or with an institution despite crisis, despite challenges. And what made you because we are committed to supporting the development of football talent in this country. 
If Ghanaian football is to get back on track, it will need transparency, investment in both youth and facilities, as well as an exciting local game. The rebuild will certainly take time, meaning it's now up to the Ghanaian authorities to reach their goal. Let's return to round two of Armchair Expert in Nairobi. Over to you, Lynn. Webster on three points and Lotan on four points. Let's go straight into round two. It's called Convince Me and here is how it works. Round two, Convince Me. You each have 15 seconds to argue for or against. Two points are up for grabs. The topic this week is Cristiano Ronaldo is the best player of his generation. Webster, you're for it. And Lotan, you're against that. We start with you and your 15 seconds. Webster, start now. Well, Cristiano Ronaldo to me is the best player of his generation. You, when you have scored 573 career goals, winning over 25 major honours with club and country, and winning nearly 85... Your time is up. And Lotan, it's your time to convince me. Um, I beg to differ with him. Yes, um, he's won over 27 honours. Messi has 38. He's not the assist king of the, in Europe. He's not the top scorer. Salah scored more goals um, last year. So arguing that Cristiano Ronaldo is the best player is um, absurd because he did not actually win anything. Time is up, Lotan. And uh, it's, it's a close call, but Lotan, <laughs> I give you the two points because yes. of... The with Latan's two points, let's have a look at the overall scoreboard. Be sure to catch us later for round three to find out who the winner will be. Now, Kenya is never short of distance runners, but Geoffrey Kamwara is a master at being both good in the stadium and out on the road. But what makes this a three-time world half marathon champion tick? And why does he so much love rugby? Now time for Who Am I? Hi, I'm Jeffrey Kamara, three times World Half Marathon Champion. The nickname so far that I have is uh, the man of all services. I do enjoy running cross country because of the obstacles. My role model is uh, Elliot Kipchoge because he's uh, my mentor, he's my training mate. He's a great athlete. Ukali, chapati, and of course uh, milk. I, I normally don't watch. Yes. My greatest rival has been uh, Mo Farah. He has been a tough guy to me in the uh, championships, and I've never defeated the team in the, on the on the track. I, I do support uh, rugby. Because that's what Kenyans uh, are best here. I do watch uh, football. I, uh, I'm getting to, to like it. I do support uh, any team which is uh, on top at, at any moment. My best uh, city in the world is Eldry because uh, this is uh, the city of champions. This is where the champions come from. And this is where we live and this is uh, where we train. Baseball. The uh, best advice to me is always to train hard, to focus, and to be a uh, self-discipline. When I'm not running, I'm, I'm resting and uh, I enjoy traveling a lot to new places. Really? He doesn't watch movies? Come on, Jeffrey, come on! Anyway, still speaking with Kenya, after round two of Armchair Expert, Lotan was slightly pulling away from Webster. But can that gunner pull it back to sit on a yellow throne in Nairobi? Over to you, Lynn. And as it stands on this final round, it's Webster on three points and Lotan on six of points. This is the third and final round, and here are the rules. Round three, the quick fire decider. 45 seconds to push up your score. Remember, shout your name before you answer or you lose out. 45 seconds start now. Which team does Samuel Otto currently play for? Pass. Um, Qatar. Qatar something, yeah. <laughs> Tiger Woods competes in what sport? Golf, Lotan, golf. Correct. Lucas Torreira plays for which club? Lotan, Arsenal. 
Correct. How many players are there in a volleyball court at any given and time of a match? 11. Lotan, 10. Wrong, 12. Who won the 2018 Hungarian Grand Prix? Pass. Lewis Hamilton. Malkia strikers have competed at the Volleyball World Cup. True or false? Lotan, true. Correct. Name the player who has assigned for Juventus from Liverpool for the 2018-2019 season. Emre Chan. Correct. How many times has Kenya women won the Africa Volleyball Championships? Lotan, 12. Nine times and time is up. <laughs> Lotan on four points and zero points to Webster. Let's have a look at what that has done to the overall scoreboard. Webster on three points and Lotan on ten points. And that means that Lotan, you're this week's BBC armchair expert winner. Come have a seat at the throne. Congratulations to you, Lotan. How does it feel to win? I mean, I knew I was destined for the, at the helm of Africa, and this is it. I'm the best. <laughs> How amazing was that you two watching us at home can be our armchair expert. See you next week. Well, that was a comprehensive win. Congratulations, Lotan. You've been a deserving winner. Remember, you can get in touch with us on anything you've seen in this program via Facebook or Twitter. And you can head over to our BBC Sport Africa website. That's where you can catch some of these pieces again. And if you have a bigger appetite, you can head over to the BBC Sport website. It's got it all covered for you. Thank you for joining us. It's been a pleasure doing this with you all the way from Accra, Ghana. Let's do this again next week, shall we? Goodbye, guys.